Good morning and welcome to our fifth Sunday in Lent. This is uh, Passion Tide, the 21st of March. And um, I'm John Osterbrand, the vicar of Alstonfield Island and Wetton. Welcome to our service for this Sunday. <laughs> o oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up. That he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our prayers of penitence. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then confess and show our love by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We are often slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We often fail to walk in the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father, all mercies, cleanse us from our sins and restore in us his image, the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
turn to the Venite, the morning psalm, Psalm 95. Okay. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. As he is his, we made it. His hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Amen. The readings are for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of your passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm is taken from Psalm 119, verses 9 to 16. How shall young people cleanse their way to keep themselves according to, to your word? With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not go astray from your commandments. Your words have I hidden within my heart that I should not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. O oh, teach me your status. With my lips I have, I have been telling of all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken great delight in the ways of your testimonies than in all the manner of riches. I will meditate on, all your, on your commandments and contemplate your ways. My delight shall be in your status and I will not forget your word. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Second reading. Reading from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 to 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you.
our gospel reading is from John chapter 12, verse 20 to 31. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. <coughs> Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what I should say, Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I'll glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it, and they said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the rule of this world be driven out. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this, indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Here we are. Um, a year on, just over a year on since um, the first lockdown. And at the time, we probably felt quite unsure and uncertain and tentative and maybe even a bit fearful about what what on earth is going to happen next and we all retreated into our own houses a lot has happened since then a lot of it has been difficult and sad those who have died those who have been on the front line caring for people in hospital, those who have been looking after us, supporting us, encouraging us. And here we are at the beginning of another year, as it were, and it feels maybe different. Spring has sprung. We have had the first day of spring might not always feel like it, but the hours have moved over and the days are getting longer and the nights are getting shorter. And maybe there is something different in the air. And that certainly was what Jeremiah, the prophet, in our first reading was feeling. He was sensing there was something different. They were in exile. They were far from home. They were cut off from all that was familiar. And he speaks of a new covenant. I'll make a new covenant. Not like it was before. A covenant where the law will be with you. But more than that, I'll write it on your hearts. I don't think he literally meant he was going to sort of take a pen and and write it you know deep inside our hearts physically but metro, metro, me, metaphorically and spiritually he was and here we have Jesus 
in our gospel reading. Notice that he's at a festival. Notice it's a time of worship. And notice that it's not just Jewish people who are there. At the very beginning, we're told that there are some Greeks. People are coming to hear and see Jesus. What for? Why? They were uncertain, just as we are. They were looking for something new. Maybe just like we are. And Jesus, in his typical fashion, tells stories, parables. And the parable he talks about is a very simple one line one. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it just remains a grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And we can see all sorts of pictures and thoughts that we can hang on that image. That a seed is a seed of hope and of new life. It is a seed that can be planted and we can be fed and nourished and sustained. When it grows and blossoms and bears its fruit and we gather the fruit and enjoy it. But if we make a connection between that and Jeremiah's image of writing the law on our hearts, then if Jesus is the law, the one who fulfills the law, the one who completes it in a way that we can never complete it, because we always fail, we always make a mess of laws, we always break them one way or another. If Jesus is that embodiment of the law, then here he is with the law written on his heart, on his life. And it is about to die. We're about to move from Lent to the events of Holy Week, Palm Sunday, next Sunday, a Monday, Thursday, the Last Supper, his arrest, his trial, his torture, and his death. There is written the law of love on a heart, Jesus' heart. And it's a heart that beats for you and for me. It's a heart that does not give up. It is a heart full of compassion and of love that overflows into our lives if we dare to invite that love into our hearts and lives. And so as we stand here now, remembering a year of isolation, of lockdown, restrictions, being able to see our loved ones, to hug and to hold those we love and hold dear. Here then is the beginning of the end. I've had my jab this week, and many others like me have received it, and many more will still go on to receive them. There is something new happening. We are not going to go back a year. We are now a year forward, and now we're going to go forward into a new way. And recall all that's happened to you in this last year and think, Think what's made a difference for me? What's helped me? What's encouraged me? What's made my heart sing and filled me with 
maybe tears. Maybe we felt touch. Those are the precious things to take with us and to share and give and embrace with those around us. So as we wait for Easter, as we wait for things to change in our world post pandemic, let us consider what is written on our hearts. Let us consider the seed that we wish to plant and harvest in the days to come. to our words of faith. Let's declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession. And I invite you to hold in your hearts and thoughts those for whom you pray at this time. Pray for all those who have died this last year. May we be signs of hope. May we br br brightly shine as candles on our doorsteps and on our windows. And here in our community here in the Peak District, we pray and remember Annie and Doris and Anne, 
Marjorie, Mary, Peter and Diana, Anne, Nancy, Ernie, Andrew, Bridget, Nick, Claire, Matt and family, Dorothy, Tara, Rob, Nicholas and Hugo, Margaret and Jeff, Alex, Scarlett, Sarah, Vic. We pray for somebody who died recently in autumn called Lisa for her family. Let us pray to God the Father who has reconciled all things to himself in Christ. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. In faith and penitence, let us make our prayers to the Father and ask for his mercy and grace. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. For your holy people, that we may overcome evil and grow in grace. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. For our journeys of faith, for those preparing for baptism and confirmation, those who are planning to get married, that they may live by every word that proceeds from your mouth. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. For the leaders of the nations, for our own leaders, that you will guide them in the ways of mercy and of truth. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. For all those in need, that they may, may not be forgotten for those experiencing poverty, that their hope may be restored. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. For the sick in body and mind and spirit, for those for whom we are praying, for all who have been afflicted by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. For the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of heaven and see you face to face. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. Let us commend the world for which Christ suffered to the mercy and protection of God. In faith we pray. Lord have mercy. We come to our Lord's prayer. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray the words Jesus gave to his friends disciples and us as we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as in, as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
in an act of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you've given us, for all the pains and insults you've borne for us. Since we cannot receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts, our most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we come to our closing prayers. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. And we ask and pray for God's blessing to be upon each one of us this day and in the week ahead. For those for whom we've been praying, those for whom we remember. Christ crucified, draw you to himself, find in him sure ground for faith, firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you everyone for joining in this service, and um, it's lovely to see you all. Uh, I hope you all have a good week. Take care. God bless. Bye.